Hello everyone, today I want to summon my inner Matt Cremona and start sawing up some logs. So, um, I've got this big lump of yew here, which has been sitting around for ages. My mate chainsawed it in half, so he's got one half of it, I've got the other half. And um, I just want to saw it up into something usable. Now, I have never done this before, I have no idea. Well, I do kind of know what I'm doing, but I can't read logs that well. But there is a lot more to think about as opposed to just cutting it into slices. So um, yeah, I've got a bandsaw. I've got a nice sharp blade, which should work really nicely for this. Let's just have a bit of fun, I think. All right, so firstly, let's mark up what I actually do know about logs. So which end of this is flattest? Let's go with that one. Yeah. God, this thing is heavy. Right, so obviously this is half a log, which means that the growth rings are going to be like this sort of shape. Obviously they're gonna follow the contours of the outside a little bit, but overall they look like a sort of rainbow kind of thing. Now from my understanding, you have three cuts of wood. You have got cortisone, where all of the growth rings are uh, right angles to the surface of the wood. So if I was to cut a slice up here, you see that all the growth rings are going across like that, which would mean to the faces here, they are perfect right angles, and that actually gives you the most stability in terms of wood movement, because wood shrinks in the direction of the grain, so this is going to shrink like that. So mainly that dimension is going to change. It will shrink a little bit more that way as well. I think that's radially, and this is tangential shrinking or something like that. Might be making it up, might have gotten the wrong way around, but this is going to experience the least amount of wood movement. The other sort of of cut you've got is through and through or um, crown cut or something like that but that is where you take a slice all the way through the log like that and you have the growth rings going sort of like that. So this obviously gives you a little bit of a quarter sawn surface here and then it starts going diagonal and then it starts going a bit horizontal in the middle in most cases. And this looks quite nice in terms of grain pattern. I've got a bit of U over there which is through sawn and it gives a really cool pattern. The only issue with this in some cases is growth rings try and straighten themselves out over time. So because there's arcs on these growth rings on this board that's going to be through here, it would mean that as those arcs try and straighten out, it's going to cut the board up like this. So it's going to make this straight board that we have cut through on the bandsaw into a smiley face sort of pattern. The advantage to a through sawn board, other than obviously the fact it looks quite nice, is that it's very easy to reproduce, obviously. you just got to cut loads of strips through the wood like that and you're ready to go. So when you buy wany edge timber with wany edges on both sides, generally it's going to be through sawn or it will be through sawn in all cases, really. Now the other option you have here is, uh, it's called rift sawn in America. Don't know if there's another word for it in the UK or if it's the same one and that is where you take a chunk out of the material I don't know let's say here if it was a leg or something like that wait for the doorbell to finish there we go so rift sawn is where you can see that the growth rings here are going to be diagonal like that so this is going to shrink mainly across this diagonal here in the direction of those lines and a little bit less this way here but overall it's a pretty stable cut the advantage to this is that this gives you straight grain on all four of the sides because the lines are going diagonal and they're going to go straight down from there whereas on a through sawn board where these lines are sort of scraping the top surface like that that is what gives you the crown cut pattern. Quarter sawn, you're gonna get the most linear grain from it because they're going perfect right angles to the surface, which would be here. And rift sawn, all of the grain patterns are meeting up with all the faces, so you're gonna get straight grain on all four of the faces. Quite good for chair legs, um, table, just legs in general, really. So um, I think, given the size of this log, I think it's gonna suit sort of boxes, draw components. I'm obviously not gonna make any legs and stuff out of it, but then at the same time, I do want to get some through sawn logs out of it because I really like the look of you when it is cut straight through and you get the sort of crown figuring pattern on it. But then at the same time, I have got some funky stuff going on here and I don't know if I through saw it, if it's actually gonna be that stable because I've got these two branches that used to be coming out here. Um, if I cut that all the way through, I don't, this is what I mean. I haven't done this before. I don't quite know what's going to happen. Obviously, it's going to pretty much repeat that pattern all the way through. Uh, is there going to be much of a use for that? It does look quite nice. I'll give it that. If I cut off these branches and just had that central section there, that does look quite cool. It actually looks book matched, even though it isn't. The only issue being this line here 
looks to be the pith, which is the like center growth ring. And that tends to split as it is doing down here. So I would need to get rid of that first. And then the board after that would be the through sawn board. And I still have the issue of it cupping over time because this bit of wood isn't very dry as far as I'm aware. So as the material dries out, that tends to be where most of the movement happens. As much as through sawn gives you lovely patterns with you, I think I'm probably just gonna try and quarter saw it, I reckon. Um, but then at the same time, I do want to test out how good that bandsaw cuts over something that deep. Right, I reckon. One through sawn board will do off the bottom like that. And then if that pith does start splitting over time or something like that, if I was to actually use it in a component, I'll just fill it with resin or something like that and reflatten it. So we'll try it. Yeah, we'll try and get one through sawn board off that. Then the rest of it, I'll try and quarter saw, I reckon. So just to reiterate that, we're gonna take one straight off the bottom like that. So that's gonna be our through sawn board. So all of this here. And then after that, we'll quarter saw all these ones up from here. They're gonna start going to rift sawn pieces here where the grain's going diagonal. And then if I carry on sawing them here, the grain is gonna start going down more. And that might give me some pretty cool patterns on the faces here, but I think quarter sawn is probably gonna be the way to go. So what I'll actually do is do some cuts up like this, and then I'll start doing cuts like this. Um, yeah, I guess I'll do something like that, maybe. I might be being, oh, actually, no, that could be a nice rift sawn piece there. I could just make a square of it. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is great fun. <laughs> right, so setting up this bandsaw, firstly, isolate so that it can't turn on and kill me and remove my hands and all that. So, uh, right, let's get my blade. So this one is three quarters of an inch whoa, thick and it has four TPI on it, so four teeth per inch and is a pretty coarse cut on there. Now unwrapping these, this is always scary. That's why I just chuck it on the floor. There we go. Saves it exploding in your face. So let's get the other one wrapped up. And then that should make the blade nice and loose. Good. And remove the mouth guard on there. And I should just be able to unhook that off the wheel. There we go. So then get it out the column around the table and then it's going to come out of this little side area here. There we go. Okay, and then to wrap them up, put one foot on the bottom, turn your hand the opposite way and then you just turn. No, that one didn't go. <laughs> and then just turn. There we go. And then somehow it gets itself into a nice old coil like that and it's ready to be hung up again. Right, and then new blade on. So make sure you've actually got it round the correct way to start with, because you don't want the teeth going the opposite way. Yeah, I'm going to need to take some tension off the wheel in order to get that in. That is on the tyre, so let's just tension it up now. Right, now I'm just going to spin the wheel by hand and we're going to get it tracking on there. So now you can see that it's pretty close to the front tyre. And so on the back here, as I'm turning it, if I turn that one way, maybe this way, that sh no, the other way. As I'm turning this, it's gonna start tracking those wheels and it's gonna allow the blade to move back. Okay, and there we go. So it's looking pretty central now. I did see a video by the Wood Whisperer where he did something with a guy, I can't remember his name, but he basically specializes in bandsaws and machinery and things like that. And he said about setting the bandsaw blade, instead of being in the center of the tire like that, more towards the back so that the teeth are actually more towards the center of the tire rather than the center of the blade. I can't remember the exact reasoning behind it. It's something to do with the arc of the wheel because if you put that blade central on the wheel and it's on the sort of arc, then it's gonna wobble side to side. Whereas if you center it more towards the back, the teeth therefore have more tension applied to them. So you're actually gonna get a straighter cut because those are now properly resting on the tires. So um, I'm, I don't know, the guy definitely knew what he was talking about. So I think I'm, I'm just gonna try it like maybe towards the back. This blade's too thick to get the teeth right in the center of the wheel anyway. So um, I don't know, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try it there. So a little bit more towards the back. Let's just try this out. Right, so now for the bearings, what I'm gonna do is spin the wheel and just check that it's not hitting any of them. So I've got one at the back here to check as well. Not hitting that. And underneath the table, not hitting any of those bearings either. Okay, and then with these bearings, I try and get them to be as close to the blade as possible without 
actually touching it through about there for now. Let's just check that the blade isn't gonna hit that still. I reckon I could actually get a little bit closer. Okay, and then the other one, so about there, maybe. Cool, they look to be close enough. So see, it's just touching like that. I'm just gonna back it off a bit. That'll do. Then on the side here, we're gonna set them so they're sitting just below the gullets of the teeth. So that they're not gonna be steamrolling over the teeth as they go through, but it's still properly supported up at the front of the blade. So lock that in place. And I'll just check the tracking again to make sure they're not hitting the bearings. All good still. So then we've got one more bearing at the back, which you can see at the top here, so loosen that off. And again, we're gonna get this as close as possible without actually touching the blade. Looks good to me. Then I can do exactly the same with the bearings underneath the table. Get them as close as possible in there. Fiddly job, but definitely worth doing. Right, and then that can go on and we'll close the doors up as well because that's all set up now. So now we've got a thing here called a bandsaw buddy, which is sold by Axminster. And what this does is this allows you to get the fence perfectly parallel to the blade. So it's got two little magnets on there and it just sticks to the edge of your blade like that. And you'll notice that there is a little cut out on there as well to account for the teeth. So you can't just rest it on there like that. The teeth can go into that little groove like that. So then I'm gonna get the fence upright because that is the position I'll be using it. And then we can slide it up. And of course the camera tripod's in the way. So I can see that it is touching at the back, but then at the front here, there's still a little bit of movement. So that means we need to adjust the fence a little bit. So I've got four bolts at the front of the fence here. That will allow me to slightly realign it. Now this is something that you can do pretty much every time you put a new blade on. It doesn't really take a lot of time and just make sure that the fence is always gonna be parallel to the blade and you're not gonna get any sort of uneven wear on the blade or side to side tracking with your cuts. Just allows everything to stay where it should. So let's slide this up to the bandsaw buddy get the fence in line with it. Looks to be about there. So tighten down opposite corners, very lightly to start with. Let's just get them all biting. Check, move the fence away and back up to it. Just to make sure that is locking. Yep. So then just tighten them down nice and evenly to make sure you don't skew it at all. There you go. That is now perfectly parallel to the blade. Right, and then providing everything is correct on there, let's just put the guard down so we don't have any risk of problems with there. Isolator on. It's touching the bearing slightly on the bottom, but I don't think that's much of an issue. So um, let's get cutting this log out. So firstly, I'm just gonna square up one of the edges and I'm probably gonna plane this square as well on the planer. So um, I reckon it'll be this edge. If I square it off from that sapwood, I'm gonna lose quite a lot of material up here. So I'm probably just gonna square it off about there. So I'll take off that little bump, which doesn't really matter. And then that's just gonna carry on down. That should just about start taking off that sap at the bottom and give me a square edge to start with. So uh, yeah, let's go with that to start with. So I've decided that when I do this, I want to have a nice flat face up against that bandsaw fence. So I'm going to try and plane this. Um, literally maxing out the planer on the first time I've used it, which is going to be great. Well, I have used this one in store, but this is the first time I've used mine. Um, and then I'm going to square off the edges to that flat face just to give me a good reference surface to rest the wood on. So uh, <laughs> let's just go. This could be so fun. <laughs>
Right, so the finish left over on this is just buttery smooth, like to say the least. It is so nice. Like these spiral heads on these planers are serious, serious business. They are really nice. So now we've got a flat face. We've got two square edges. I'm going to try and rip straight through this height wise on the bandsaw and um, yeah, see what sort of finish we're left with. I'm actually quite interested to see what the next board will look like though, because this has actually cleaned up quite nice. And I think that if I was to square that off, that would make quite a nice box lid or something like that. So maybe through sawn is the way to go with this. I really don't know. Um, it's all fun, it doesn't matter. Okay, so, sorry, first microphone died, so I'm using a separate one now, but this is literally the highest the blade guard will go within about five millimeters. So it's safe to say that I am maxing out this machine. So I think what I'm gonna do is take off just over 20 millimeters or something like that. And then because I've already planed one side, the other side would only need to be thickness. So it would be quite easy to get that down to 18 mil thick or 15 mil after thicknessing. So I've got a little scale on the bandsaw buddy here that I can use. This just makes it nice and easy to set up your resawing distance. So yeah, let's do it. I don't know, that'd be about 22 there, most likely. They're getting nicer as I cut through them. Like, I don't know if I can bring myself to quarter saw straight down the center of that. Like, you just look so good when it's through sawn. So, uh, one more, <laughs> one more. So yeah, I got a bit carried away with the through and through sawing. Um, I don't know, it's, it's not that it was easier, it's literally the results were just getting better and better every single time I went through. So obviously I started with this, which looks pretty good, it's pretty wacky. I mean, a lot of this stuff's gonna be wastage, but there was some cool stuff going on. So as I got through, I was like, oh, a bit cleaner. Maybe I could have a cleaner face as opposed to a gnarled up one like that. That looks quite nice. So I went through a bit further and the pattern started getting a little bit more swirly in the middle. You see here it's still quite linear up in this area, linear down there. Whereas this, you, you get a bit more swirling in there. Um, so I thought, oh, maybe just one more. And then I went to this one and we started getting little bits of pippiness in there. So that's where you get these little dots. And again, the pattern kept getting swirlier. So I thought, one more. Cut that one off and then got even more pip, which is a really sought after effect on you. So I just thought, you know what? It's looking really good still. I might as well do one more. And then I got this proper swirly one at the end as well. Um, obviously this side, mostly sapwood, but it still looks pretty cool. I'm sure I could incorporate that into something, but yeah, this 
is the advantage with cutting straight through the board because we're getting the top of the growth rings and as a result you get all of these swirly patterns going on whereas if I was to cut it quarter sawn down the middle you know I'm going to get linear grain like I've got across the top here but it would be all the way down so um, yeah I think U is it's just one of those ones that looks great when it's cut straight through the middle and I just couldn't resist it as I was going um, yeah that was a fun experiment. I'm going to try and think of a project to make around all of these. I have been asked to make a box, so um, I think this would make a good opportunity to do that. Um, we'll just have to see. Thank you very much for watching. I thoroughly enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video.